real soon? No, but I'll come up anyway. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let's Good luck. You didn't see anything. So you click it when they're not talking, and you don't click it when they're not. No, that's right. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters. Good morning. And unfortunately, no guests. James, but uh, Jim, has picked for me. I don't like that man. I must get to know him better. Abraham Lincoln said that, and I'll bet every one of us in this room has thought that, or should have thought that, while we were glad-handing around a social collection of people. Abraham Lincoln is not one of my favorite historians, presidents. It's intimidating. Look at that statue, his huge hands, huge feet, big, almost out of proportion features. And yet, what a man. What he did for us, what he did for the country, because he thought he should get to know us better even though he wasn't ebullient when he spoke. He was powerful. His words, I just got goosebumps now thinking about the Gettysburg Address and what it has meant to all of us. Anybody who went through fifth grade probably had to memorize it. <laughs> I did. I wish I could have known him in my time. Switch around. And you told the people that I chose your quote. That's all. Hey, mm -hmm. mm. yeah. Sir, my concern is not whether God is on our side. My greatest concern is to be on God's side, uh -huh. for God is always right. Abraham Lincoln was the original Toastmaster. He would use his stories to bring people together. How many of you saw the movie Abraham Lincoln? Many of you. There's a Was scene it just in there. Lincoln? There's a there's a scene in there where he's sitting there and he starts telling the story about these two opposing people, and by the end of the story, they're on the same page. The movie comes from the book A Team of Rivals, and people don't understand that. There were four people who were running for president, and Lincoln won. And the three other people thought he was a country bumpkin and disregarded him entirely and actually had no respect for him whatsoever. He sought out those three men and brought them into his cabinet because they were the most capable men in the United States. Now, his cabinet was split, split between pro-slavery and anti-slavery. And he was able to corral those men and utilize them to be able to run that country and always have those opposing views, but he would use his Toastmaster stories to make sure that they are always on the same page. So not only did he keep the country together, he kept that cabinet together even though some of those men hated each other. But at the end of the day, his ebullient nature, or ebullient, depending on which way you want to pronounce it, nature, kept the country together, kept his team of rivals together through his use of stories. Thank you. Can someone 
take over the timekeeping for panels? I will. Mm -hmm. In one of these places, I really want somebody to address. And it's right here. Oh, <laughs> so, lucky. so lucky you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly all men can stand adversity, but if you want to test a man's character, give him power. <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters, I think that says it all. Adversity is one thing, but power is another. And as we know, power corrupts, and it certainly can. But in Abraham, in, in his era, and Gary said it best as far as the whole history of what was going on there, and that is what made him such a great leader was, it wasn't about him. It was about the country. And it was about the people that he brought together. So basically, he took the power he had, and he found the people that he knew that could do the job and brought them together. And I think that's what great leadership is about. Unfortunately, if they get too involved with the power, which we've seen happen over years and years as we've moved through the last couple of hundred years, I think if our forefathers could see what's been going on lately, they'd all be flipping around in their graves wondering, what did, we, what, what did we do all that fighting for? What did we do all that planning for? Because that's what they tried to do, was to keep from putting the power in one place. So what we need to look forward to is an ebullient leader who's going to come along and bring us back to where we need to be. So let's all think positive. We need that leader to emerge and not be corrupted by power. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. I knew you could handle that. <laughs> Linda, would you like to take Okay, James, you have to run for president. We, the people, are rightful masters of both Congress and the courts, not to overthrow the Constitution, but to overthrow the men who pervert the Constitution. That's a real stretch right now. <laughs> I am positive that there are pros and cons about this. I, uh, power corrupts. For sure. Right? Yeah. Power corrupts. Sometimes people come into power and it doesn't have to be as big as the President of the United States, but that is certainly a good example. It can be something on a smaller level. And the person who was the friendliest, most jovial, the smartest, hardworking person turns into something else. <laughs> and there's no way of knowing, is there? No way of knowing which one of us would turn into that monster kind of a person because they were given too much power. Sometimes they can be ebullient and overflowing with enthusiasm until they get that power. And then that enthusiasm turns into dictatorship. So, yes, power does corrupt, and sometimes men will get into power, and women, and
and they will try to pervert the Constitution. Thank you. ever since early childhood, I would compare myself to him, and like James, uh, I once had a beard, and uh, looked, and perhaps there was a connection there, but not a lot more. He was a great speaker, much more so than myself, but one thing that Abraham Lincoln very strongly Held was that he was a firm believer in the people. He relied on the democratic process to become elected, and he was the first. This was the first national election. His re-election campaign was the first national election in the history of the world to be conducted during a war. A war. A, in fact, it was a, a in, internal war, a civil war. And he relied on the people to, he could have de declared a dictatorship. He relied on the people to have him reelected, which is what actually happened. A great, great point is to bring them the real facts, and he did the best he could in that response. He was perhaps not an ebullient person, but that was understandable. He was carrying the weight of the world on his shoulders. He had a great sense of humor, though, and with that, he lifted himself and those around him up in his enthusiasm for what to doing what was right. <laughs> you evaluators, looks, we have a lot of time here, so you may as well get ready. But I'm going to call on David. and really cared about our, his country, but when, with women, he said, a woman is the only thing I am afraid of mm -hmm. that I know will not hurt me. And I'm not sure what he actually means by this. I'm going to just take a stab because I don't know a lot about his personal life, but a woman who will not hurt me. I'm going to assume that he may have had a wonderful marriage. Mm -hmm. He really had the support of his spouse, as a president of our country, and he really knew that he had a, a, 
a, a strong person at his side behind the scenes because think how much stress he was under trying to deal with all the differences of all the different people. And Gary mentioned he had to bring people from such diverse backgrounds together. So when he left his work at, at night and went home, who did he really have to talk to? A woman, his wife. And so it sounds to me like Abraham Lincoln was blessed to have a very loving, caring, supportive uh, wife to help him be a great leader that he was. Thank you. Ken, have you, are you well enough done with your evaluation that you can come up here and take? All right. Not everything, every quote you read on the internet is actually said by the one it's attributed to, Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> America will never be destroyed from the outside. If we falter and lose our freedoms, it will be because we destroyed ourselves. It was actually not the first person to say something very similar to that. I believe it was James Madison who talked about how if, if we, no, it was Ben Franklin. If once the people learn they can vote themselves money, I, I don't remember the word he used, we will destroy this nation. And I think we're in the process of that. We have a, nearly a majority now on government assistance. And that means the other half are paying for them. Are you a payer or a taker? You know, it's really one or the other. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was adamantly opposed to public sector employee unions. He stated that ebulliently. <laughs> But John Kennedy needed to get elected. And in order to get Chicago to swing his way, which was actually the turning point of that election, he went against FDR and said he would authorize public employee unions. And they have been in control of much of our decline as I see it ever since. So I know I'm not going to get your vote for this one. But <laughs> <laughs> Certainly but, not. <laughs> but it's something that, that I feel very strongly about. And so did FDR. <laughs> something to relate to. the people, yes. Is it a question 
of giving money to people who are in need of food? Or is it a question for the capitalist to be taken over by the lobbyist, which is happening. The F-35 planes, which one trillion dollars of our taxpayer money, one trillion and a half, is given to Lockheed Martin to fly a military plane that does not work. Oh yes, this is what the capitalists are doing. Lockheed Martin summons the appeals to, they're the lobbyists, they appeal to our Congress to fund these endeavors. And it's a continual money-making machine. Whether the, whether the plane works or not, the money is still going to the military. It's a continual feed. I feel very ebullient about this subject. So is it really a question of if our taxpayer monies are going to people that need food, or is it going to the military aircraft, which planes which will never work? Trillions of dollars are going there. I urge you to go online and brilliantly petition to your Congress people. Thank you. Well, that's about all the time we have. No. <laughs>